Alrighty, hey, yo, what is up, knights? Aegis right Shrek here, back with some more DFO PvE, and man, am I so excited, man! Okay, so if you guys look on the screen right now, I think I have found my training partner, guys. We have found the yin to my yang, guys. So, just a little backstory, uh, a little bit recently ago, we found the yang sword for my elven knight, and it's a really overpowered sword, it's really good. Um, but I haven't been able to use it to its full potential because it has an extra effect. If you guys look at the skill description, um, it has the extra effect that it, if I was partied with a member who has the Yin Sword, while I have the Yang Sword equipped it, we get extra effects. And his sword actually does the same thing. Uh, if he's partnered with me, he gets extra effects. Uh, mostly it's a fire and ice kind of thing. So yin and yang, fire and ice. I'm the fire sword, he's the water sword, and we both can uh, benefit off of each other when we party up. Now, this guy Z right here is actually extremely geared. Probably the most geared soul bender I've ever seen in this game. Um, and, you know, he just happened to have this sword, and we're going to try to party up, guys. And uh, he's probably going to show me up <laughs> because <laughs> he has a lot more stuff aside from the sword. But it's going to be nice that I found my... Uh, my yin to my yang, so let's do it. And you know, I gotta be honest, it was actually kind of funny how we met. Uh, <laughs> it, it makes it seem like we're a couple or something. We basically are, but uh, anyway, <laughs> it's kind of funny. I saw him in town, right? And I was just like, uh, you know, wearing my normal uh, umbrella at the time. And I was just like, looking at his weapon because he didn't have an avatar blocking what weapon he had. And I was just like, <gasps> and I just did gasp. And I was like, you, it's you. It's my soulmate! <laughs> it got really gay really quick, but it doesn't matter, guys. So, um, as you guys can see, um, this guy's really powerful. I'm gonna be having a hard time actually seeing the power of this weapon, I think. Uh, he's using high level tombstone right now. Although, he did mention that uh, he thinks he got the wrong build right at the start there. So, um, he doesn't have his tomb um, tombstone EX, sadly. Uh, but we are indeed OP, man. Um, we're doing a little bit of Velmark Area 50. It's probably one of the easiest of all the Requiem dungeons. And uh, during the event time, it's actually really easy to farm these. Or really beneficial to farm these, not easy. Uh, but you're going to need a lot of gear to do these. Uh, but that being said, it's a really good time to do them because we're getting double drop rate. Or, or double drop rates for the Requiem stones that we need to craft the Liberation weapons. And we're also, you know, doing all their stuff. So we got a pretty good combo going here. Uh, you know, Soul Bender is really good for casting a lot of status effects and grouping enemies together right there so I can use something like a Faithful Breakthrough, which I do have the Awakened 1 title to give me two, plus 2 on that now. So it's like the strongest I can ever get that skill at this point because I have the Shield Rush Champion Chain doing extra damage. And it's a really good skill. Right there, slamming him with the... Uh, with the uh, I, I forgot what that skill is called. How, how can I be a Harbinger of Life? Excuse me. I'm doing a post commentary here this time because uh, I wasn't recording at the time. I was too excited to record. I was just like, I wanted to see this guy in action, see see the combo in action. But uh, I haven't been really using the sword's effect, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. I'm gonna use my pet effect as well as the sword effect to try and get a, a little bit of extra fire damage here using the pulverize. Already smashed his HP. Now I'm not gonna say that I couldn't probably do this solo. Uh, I'm not gonna say I'm like that strong, but together, you know, we're pretty strong considering that the dungeon is a little bit harder than it would have been if we just went in solo. Um, and uh, still proving that uh, th this combo, uh, both of us are pretty good in party together. So if there was ever some harder content that we needed to do, which I think we can, both of us can safely say we could do um, all of the Requiem dungeons pretty easy solo. But if Anton, when Anton comes around, you know, harder stuff. Uh, we're going to be a pretty strong duo. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do one extra run, just to show off. Because it's kind of hard to tell right now, as I, I mentioned, that it's kind of hard to see what the effects are of the sword. Uh, just because we're not really seeing, um, like, uh, extra damage procs, you know. We're hitting so hard already, that's kind of hard to see. But definitely, we are getting benefits off of the off of each other, just by the sheer fact that we are in a party together, and we have these weapons on. So absolutely, if you have these weapons, you want to be in a party with somebody else. Um, who has them as well just to get the extra benefits, but guys we're gonna go ahead into the rerun and see how well we do Alrighty now the first time uh, Zeke didn't have his tombstone EX hopefully he's got it this run But guys we're doing uh, another run right here obviously I'm um, gonna try to remember this run to use a little bit more of the actual effect of the sword Problem right now actually with the sword that is gonna get fixed in the future is that um, The sword doesn't really last a long time it casts a buff on yourself um, and it's a buff that has a duration of 20 seconds and I believe a cooldown of 20 seconds. Um, so it does have infinite duration, but you got to remember to keep turning it on and on and on. And it endows your party's uh, weapon with the fire element in my case. And his case would be the ice element. Um, 
And you, you might think that might be a bad thing, actually, but in terms of how the damage or elemental system worked in DFO, uh, you, it is possible indeed to have two different types of element on one weapon. Um, so you can have a fire and ice. If I just buff up everybody with fire, he gives me ice. You can have that, but it will always proc the damage that will do the most damage in either case. So um, most in most cases, you know, I'm going to be stacking fire damage, so my fire damage will be doing more damage. Maybe an enemy is actually weak to ice, in which case it will do uh, the ice damage instead. You know, it will always pick the one that will give you the highest value. So the system's kind of smart in that way. We're actually making short work of everybody this run. Look at this. I think uh, probably due to his Tombstone EX, Andy has a six set effect from his uh, from the Chronicle gear, but um, these guys are actually resistant to element. <laughs> You can see actually they have elemental defense. It doesn't really matter that much. They're not that tanky anyway. But uh, I imagine in Rush Pwn Village of Pain or something, then we are going to get fucked up because because uh, that was probably one of my hardest dungeons, honestly, of, out of all the Requiem dungeons. I probably won't show that off because it took me literally 15 minutes to complete this. So, um, I believe I get grabbed at some point during here, and then I'm going to get fucked up. These guys, these guys are designed to be super annoying. You know, They grab you once, you fall over, they grab you again. Luckily, the, the Bremen and all of the circles and stuff uh, reduce the problem. Uh, wanted to go into this room. I blame Z for this because we actually summoned the uh, the time get, time lord guy. Doesn't matter. We get to test our strength a little bit more, but uh, they're using the lunge evolution. And th the gimmick that happens right there, if you actually look on the mini-map, guys, which I haven't been able to show off a Requiem Dungeon healing right now. I missed the entire attack by accident, but... If you look at the mini-map right now, there's a little, like, uh, wheel or, like, ship-looking, like, wheel kind of thing. Um, and basically, in, inside of the, the, the room, there will be a big, large pentacle. And if you don't step on it in it for a certain dura duration of time, he'll just summon. So that's what happened there. We stayed out of it for too long. But let's try to get our CC going on on this Hyper Mecha Tau. And sadly, I was able to get the robots off. But, uh... Hyper Mecha Tau is actually a card that I really want to farm myself because the EX Hyper Mecha Tau card actually gives me plus 20 uh, fire damage. So, uh, obviously, if I can get three Hyper Mecha Taus, that's just giving me 60 extra fire damage just flat out if I put it on all my accessories. So, definitely a well sought out, sought out card for me, in my case, for the Yank Sword. Um... And that is just probably one of the highest damage boosts I can get for this sword, honestly. So, anyway, guys, there was a couple runs with my uh, soul partner, soulmate, I guess, uh, Yin. Uh, so there was the Yin and Yang run. Sorry, I couldn't show off any intricacies. Actually, looking at the effect, we just kind of partied together. We met on a, like just randomly, and like, dude, let's, we got to party. We got to try this. And lo and behold, we were both kind of OP. So we just got a little bit even more OP by partying together. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Um, hope this video is interesting, and I will catch you guys oh, later.